All right, welcome back to another Magical Voxel video. In this one, I'll show you how to use file to vox as well as a software called JS Placement to easily create modular sci-fi props that you can use in your scenes. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna install is JS Placement. I will leave a link in the description to this website so that you can easily access it. Once you click on that link and get to this site, just go ahead and click on the appropriate installer package, depending on your OS. I have Windows, so I'm going to click on JS Placement Installer and let that install. Once it's done, just go ahead and left click on it and let JS Placement install. Once JS Placement is installed, a pop-up should appear in your taskbar right here and we are now in JS placement. So go ahead and go ahead and click on these um, dots right here and it opens up the uh, list of options that you can click on. We're going to go with JS placement 2 and over here select on whatever set you want. I'm going to go ahead and select crap pack Decrease background brightness, background iterations, and iterations to the lowest setting. And just keep clicking generate until you find sprites that you think look good that you could use as props. I think this one looks good. There's a lot of variation and they're all spaced out. So just going to go ahead and save height. And we're going to save the height in our desktop. All right, this next step involves using GIMP. I already have GIMP installed, so I'm not going to install it, but you would just go to the GIMP website and hit and download. So once you've installed GIMP, you can go ahead and go to your desktop or wherever you save the height map file and double click on it. It's going to ask where do you like to open the file into. We're going to select GIMP. Okay. We're going to first Go to image, mode, indexed, and change the maximum number of colors to say 10. Hit convert. And this can take some time depending on your PC. Once you're done with that, we need to adjust the scaling. So we're going to go to image, scale image, and we're going to drop this down to a thousand. Once you've scaled it, go, go ahead and go to file export as and select your desktop and just type PNG at the end of the um, file and export. So while I will have links to both file to box and file to box lazy GUI in the description below. So once you click on that, you can just go ahead and download it by right clicking and hitting download and let that download and I'm going to download both of these and save it to my desktop. Okay, I'm on my desktop now, and I'm going to right click this file, extract all. It saves right here. I'm going to delete the compressed the zipped folder, and I just have these two. And I'm going to double click File to Box Lazy GUI. Should open up a new window. Um, we're going to fill up all these. Right here, number one, where is file to box? It's right here in my desktop. So locate your desktop, file to box, double click the application. My file is this height map. So it's in my desktop right here, sci fi prop height, output path. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, wherever your file is saved, that's where the output path is going to be. So I just like to leave that blank uh, over here. Where it says height map, we're going to give it a height of 25. That's it. We can go ahead and hit convert. A new command prompt should pop up. And depending on your PC, this can take some time. But for me, it took really fast. And you can see it saves right here. Now double click on it. And now you can see we have sci-fi props that we can use. You can actually clean this up even more. So if, for instance, this is taking up two spaces and I don't like that. You can just click on both of them and hit U and it combines both the objects and 
constricts the objects to its working space. And we're going to do the same for this one right here. Just select all the boxes that this object is in, press U. And this one, it's by itself, so I can leave that alone. I can just press this button right here, fit model size, and do the same for the rest of them. Once you've constricted all the objects and cleaned it up a bit, you are basically done. You can go ahead and go into each of these objects and give it whatever color you like. All right, so if you don't want a simple gray color for your height map, you're going to have to um, go back to this step where you're about to save the height map. So we're going to go ahead and save the height map and call it just height map simplicity and save it to my desktop. Over here, click on toggle colorizer. And now you can have a list of options to choose. And this will directly in impact the picture on the right. So go ahead and pick whatever you like. I think this one looks kind of cool. So I'll go ahead and save color and just call it color. And we're going to do the exact same process we did in GIMP to the height map. Okay, so in GIMP, we're going to do the exact same thing we did um, previously with our first height map. Go over to Image, Mode, Indexed, change the maximum amount of colors to say 25, hit Convert. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and scale the image. So Image, Scale Image, 1000 by 1000. Hit scale, and now we can export as map.png. Hit save and export. So because we are going to use two of these files, uh, and we scale this one to a thousand by a thousand, we need to scale this one as well. So go ahead and double click the colored height map and open with GIMP, and we're going to do the exact same process. We're going to go to uh, image mode indexed 25 and then go back to image scale image 1000 by 1000 scale and now export as color.png export now in our file to box go ahead and find where file to box is saved Grab our height map file, keep the output path the same. For height map value, we're going to do the exact same thing. Let's put it set 25. But we're now going to enable colors and choose color from file. Hit browse, click on colored, and go ahead and hit convert. Once it's done, you can go ahead and take a look at it. You can see the 25 colors have been applied to the models and you can obviously change this to whatever you like and this just saves you some time if you are lazy and don't want to color you just want to get some models in this is a really easy way to do that so that basically wraps up the contents of this tutorial i hope it's helped and i'll see you all in the next video